This is a code walkthrough of my uh, flocking uh, JavaScript application. Uh, it doesn't do flocking yet. That's okay. That's the that's the goal. And here's the animation showing these voids. They click around and they move through what I'm calling the arena from maybe might be the mountain to the uh, moat or the river. So here's the code. Uh, let's see here. So we've got uh, this is Nerd Tree. I'm using Vim, and uh, let's see. I've got my test directory, arena.js. This is the HTML file, so let's have a look at that. And I, and actually, we'll look at all the files, and we'll get rid of this nerd tree. And so here's the uh, JavaScript for the voids, what I'm calling them. Uh, the HTML file, it sets it all up. The arena, which uh, handles uh, uh, the movement. Currently, this is the only step in a movement pipeline I'm going to build. And I'm going to add other uh, movement uh, JavaScript files that will do different things to the velocity and the direction of the voids, and they'll kind of uh, interact with each other. And here's the test that I've got. So let's get rid of this and let's look at the HTML file. So here we add um, some uh, uh, JavaScript files. You can see we've, we're adding uh, test.js is our general test framework and arena.js handles movement uh, in, the, in the arena step of the pipeline or for this particular model that I'm working with. And then test for that and then voids, how to draw and animate voids and everything. And then we've got this uh, setup here, setting up the JavaScript. Uh, we set up a timer to run the animation function, and this just handles canvas clicks. And on body, uh, on load, we run all the tests. So every time you refresh the page, it runs all the tests. And then we've got a button to say go, and then canvas has an on click. Uh, let's see if we can on click uh, function that'll add voids. So that's pretty simple. So uh, that sets everything up. Let's go look at voids. I'm using Control P, uh, part of the Janus package, uh, to open up files. So here we've got animate, uh, grabs the uh, context, clears it for every cycle of the animation to get rid of all the old voids, and then runs animate voids. Animate voids is recursive. Uh, if you've run out of voids to animate, then you're done. So, uh, so here we uh, move each void according to the arena or the movement pipeline which currently just has the arena movement uh, logic and we everything's going to be functional so we'll copy everything we won't keep anything global except for one list of voids and we'll create a copy anytime we change anything so it'll be functional uh, so we create our new void and then we draw it uh, sending in the context well so the context is not functional but uh, that's just all you get with canvas and then we'll uh, add, we'll take a copy of the, because this is recursive, each time we call the function from itself, we pass it the newest collection of new voids. And we don't want to edit that destructively, so we create a copy of it with slice. That'll, that'll copy, create a new array based on this array from zero to the end. And we'll push on our new void, and then we'll call the function recursively to animate the rest of them. And then we're done, it'll return the new voids that we created. So uh, move void takes the canvas, uh, gets the dimensions, and creates a dimensions object of that canvas, and then uses arena vector. So we'll see that in the arena.js file, that this is the first step of the movement pipeline that I'm building, where it, tell, it, it, it doesn't really use vectors yet, it just uses points, but it says based on this void's location uh, and the canvas dimensions, uh, tell me where this void should go. And it gets a new point so far, I call it a vector because it will eventually be, and then we apply that vector, that point for now, to the void, and we get back a new copy of that object called void and return that. So apply vector just calls moved void. Moved void, uh, we'll copy the void first because we don't want to destructively edit, uh, even though we're not planning on using it. Uh, it's just a general rule that I like to use. It keeps things nice and clean. And we set the location of that moved void to the new vector, and this is the copy, and we return that. Uh, copy just simply creates a new object. This I need to get rid of all this. Uh, it creates a copy of that. It creates a new object with copies of those values. Um, and feel free if you've watched this and leave me comments uh, in the, on the video if if you see something I'm doing wrong. I don't I don't care. I, I'd love to know. Here is what happens when we add a void. We um, add it uh, at a point. Here's uh, drawing the voids. Take the x, the y, the radius and draw an arc that's, uh, I think it's like, I don't know, seven-eighths of an arc or something, and then adds a triangle on top. You can see it here 
these little uh, circles with the little uh, hats on them. That's going to be the beak. And that's it. That's that's fairly simple. So let's look at the arena. Uh, and we'll see. Uh, region, let, let's go down a little and, and I'll explain what's going on here. So uh, you can see we've got um, this outer uh, rectangle and a mid rectangle. See, it's called mid and center. So there's three concentric rectangles. And the voids are going to move out from the center out to the outside and then go in counterclockwise motion around the outside. So that's the idea of what we're trying to get with this arena.js movement uh, pipeline step. So let's go back to the top. So these are all the functions. If you find your, if a void finds itself in a particular region, it will call that region's function to figure out where to go. And let's see. So we have uh, we've broken our our canvas up into columns and rows based on percentages. So region coordinates will take the point that you're at, the dimensions uh, of the area you're in, the column percentages and the row percentages, and figure out what row column you're in. And then we can get the function for that. So pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, region coordinates will uh, take the endpoints of each column. So the far right limit of that column for each column and the far bottom limit of each row. So it can tell if you're within that row. If you're not within the first row, which in this case, if you had a 100 by 100 canvas, the first row is uh, right here at 15%. So that would be 30 pixels wide. So if you're under 30 you're in the first column and same with the uh, with the rows if you're within uh, 30 of the top of uh, the starting y coordinate you're going to be in the first column or sorry the first row this will be the first column this will be the first row so region coordinates does that uh, it uses region row or column it doesn't matter they're both the same it's just you taking a uh, the size of the current row or column and seeing if the if the X or Y that you're currently in is smaller than that and it calls itself recursively. So here we say if we've got uh, um, one percentage, uh, this is sorry sizes, I don't think we even use sizes. So percentages to endpoints, uh, it calls itself recursively. If you've got any more percentages, then uh, then we haven't run out of them yet. And if you when you first call this, you don't set your start point, you don't set your end points. That, so they're uh, optional uh, uh, parameters, and I set those. Uh, this function will set them for you. You find out the current endpoint for this percentage, for the first percentage, and you add uh, your starting point. So when I call this recursively, I'll update the starting point so that each column or row knows where the last column ended, and it adds the percentage of the total size to the starting point to get what its endpoint is. So if the first column ends after 30 pixels, it'll pass that to the next iteration, the next recursion, and the next column knows, oh, I start at 30 and I end at whatever percentage of the of the total size I am plus 30. And it takes, uh, everything's done functionally. We don't destructively edit, so we have to take copies of everything. And then uh, we return, uh, the, we call this recursively again and tell it to return. And I don't care about the performance here. Whatever, make it right, or make it work, make it right, then make it fast if you need to. And you can see from this uh, little video here that it's chugging along and it has no problem editing or uh, animating a whole bunch of voids. So then if we've run out of uh, percentages, then we return all the endpoints that we found. And region, row, or column, once you have the end sizes, you pass it the X or the Y and your endpoints, and it will tell you what uh, row or column you're in as far as the regions. And it calls itself recursively. If you didn't find it, you've run out, return negative one. Uh, if you uh, call this the first time and you've left row or column undefined, it sets it to zero. If your point that you're at, your extra Y, is less than the end of the current column you're working on, which is the first one in the list we passed, then return it. Otherwise, call this recursively with the rest of the endpoints and then update what number column that must be. So the first time through, it'll be zero. If X or Y is less than the first the endpoint of the first row or column, then you're in the zeroth index of that row or column. Otherwise, the next time you'll be, we know it'll be column one. Anyways, here's a little diagram showing uh, showing um, what this works. I showed that earlier. And here are the functions that determine what you should do. So the out top left, and you can see in the diagram, out is the outside concentric rectangle. And if you're in the top left, it'll start pushing you down. And I have four simple functions, down, right, up, and left. So based on where you are in that, what region you're in, it'll tell you to go up or down or left or right. And so it's very simple. And here's those functions.
up, down, left, right. Uh, finally, uh, I want to go through the testing. So let's look up test.js and I'll breeze through this. That's the function to get all the tests uh, uh, that, uh, and we have to, it sucks, we have to do this manually right now. So get the arena tests and then uh, return that. That's used by run tests and it'll run through uh, each test and show the results. It's nothing very exciting. Uh, it, in a try catch, it calls the function and it gets the results and the function is a test function. It'll, if there, something failed, the test will tell you. Otherwise, if there was an error, it'll capture it and then tell you what the error was and puts those into a results div. It's, and it's, uh, yeah, I think it runs, is it run recursively? Yeah, runs recursively. And, uh, so it'll, uh, It'll return after it gets, you know, to the end of the recursion. It'll it'll tell you what the results were, and it just keeps keeps adding them on to the end of the array. Now that's a debug function I don't even use. I don't think show test results. That's pretty simple stuff. Uh, show test failures. That's recursive. Runs through all the failures you had and puts them each on a line. Uh, array arrays equals a little utility method just to compare if arrays are two arrays are equal and it's recursive. So keep running through each element of the array. If they're not the same size, obviously they're not equal. Points equal just checks two points. Uh, there's probably a math point object in there somewhere. I just created my own, whatever. Here is a random int, and I gotta edit this. This is kind of cheesy. If you don't specify, if you only specify one parameter, I'm counting that as max, but it'll get set in min and max will be undefined. So if max is undefined, then max is equal to whatever you put into min and min is zero. But I should just put max then min. But uh, this is kind of dumb. And then we take uh, math random which is between 0 and 1, times it by your max minus your min to get what portion you want uh, to be random. So let's just, an example would be easier. You pass in minimum 10, maximum 100. It'll say, okay, give me a random number between 10 and 100, which will be 0 to 90, and then add 10 to it so that you'll get a number between 10 and 100. Uh, pretty simple stuff. And then finally, arena, and this is long, I know, but there's a lot of code to get started with. Uh, arena tests. Uh, is this? No, this is arena. Arena tests. So we keep all the tests in array. When we add a test, we push it onto there. It's a global variable. But when we return it and get arena tests, we return a copy of it. So nobody gets a copy of the of the global array. Here's a test arena vector is the main function of arena. And so we pass it all these this list of starting points. And then the what endpoint you're expecting and the dimensions, and it'll run all these tests down here if, uh, in uh, arena vector test. Actually, that's what that's the function that's creating them. So it takes a start, the expected, and the dimension. It creates an object labeled, and then you run test arena vector points with each of these recursively, and it runs each one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, gets the next one. Uh, to calls arena vector to get whatever point it was translated to checks to see if the points are equal and if they're not it gives you a nice message uh, otherwise it runs the next one and so it'll fail it'll fail fast which kind of sucks but whatever you, I, you can work through them and it works now so test region coordinates uh, fig make sure that if you pass it certain coordinates with certain row percentages and a certain dimension that you get back what you expected to get back like you know if i'm at x is 30 and y is 50 then i should be in uh, row five, column two, uh, and each time you create a test function, you have to add it. You have to add that test to the list, which sucks, but whatever, it works. I don't want to go learn another test framework just this weekend for this project. So, but I need unit tests because everything uh, is starts out broken because I suck. Here's percentages uh, to work out the test sizes. I don't even think I use that uh, the sizes function, but anyways, it's tested. If I need to use it, test percentage endpoints. Uh, take uh, percentage endpoints of a size and break it up into percentages and make sure that equals uh, the right amounts. So the first column is 10% of 20, which will be too wide. Next one's 30% of 20, which will, uh, or it's 20% of 20, which will be 4, but it's after this column. So this one ends at 2. This one adds 4 to that will end at 6. This one's 30%, which will be 6, but it adds to the original 6 to get 12. This one's eight, but it adds the 12 to get 20. So there's, you get your, your consecutive endpoints for, for columns broken up by those percentages. So I can change the canvas size and not have all this break. Test region, row, or column. Um, uh, so you create some random size columns 
and then get points within those columns and make sure when you say region row or column it gives you back the appropriate uh, row or column based on those column endpoint sizes. And that's it. That's all the tests for arena.js. So once again, back to NerdTree, uh, you can see there's the main HTML, there's the animation uh, functions, there's the uh, movement functions, there's the tests, and that's it. So there's, uh, there's all the code, a quick run through of how I got this to work. And by all means, fire me an email, uh, send, send me some comments. Uh, I'll try not to let my feelings get hurt. And if you want to check it out, it's at GitHub, www.github.com, uh, C.W. McGuire flocking. And yeah, I hope this is uh, entertaining or useful or something or whatever. <laughs>